If you're new to gardening, Peperomias are a great plant to start with. They're uh, pretty easy to take care of. They are generally pretty hardy. They're small, nice and green. And honestly, they really do capture a lot of that tropical vibe that you might want to try and have in your house or in your office. It makes for a good desk plant. And you know what? They're pretty easy to grow and generally easy to propagate as well. Hey there, I'm Nick from Planted TV. I'm here to talk to you about Peperomia cubensis which is a pretty cool little variant that actually feels a lot like um, the baby rubber plant variation, which is the Peperomia optusifolia. Now, in this case, the cubensis is quite different. It's got smaller leaves, it's got thinner leaves, but it is uh, also quite succulent in its nature. And I can see how it can be confused, although there are quite a bit of differences and to the point where you'll see really obviously what those differences are when you start getting into actually growing these guys. So, Peperomia cubensis is a tropical plant like the rest of the Peperomia family. The cubensis is definitely pretty unique on its own. I like it because it makes a great desk plant. It's a really tiny little guy. It fits nicely in a little tiny pot. It doesn't get particularly big. Like on the outside, they're gonna be like kind of eight, eight inches squared, maybe up to 12 if you've got a really healthy one. Unless you were to put more than one in the same pot, then you know, you're kind of faking it at that point, so what you gonna do. The interesting bits about this plant is that the stems grow in a bit of a zigzag pattern. They've got this kind of deep, between pink and red stem, and you get these branches that come off at different points of these leaf nodes. Sometimes you'll get two leaves, you'll get more than that from one leaf node, sometimes you'll just get one. I noticed that in this one specifically, I've got a whole bunch of little more kind of bushy growths coming out the bottom. And I do think that at some point this plant will probably want to trail a bit. It's more of a upright grower until it gets to a certain height. And then you get a bit of trailing off the sides where these guys are sort of creeping off, kind of bushing out to the sides. I don't know that it would actually vine much, like kind of going over the edge of the pot and going downwards, but it's definitely kind of sticky outy. Since I do have a few of these, these are all propagations from the same three stems that I had. And I've actually got a whole tray full of propagations and these were all leaf propagations. They all started off from a single leaf. This is a leaf that didn't make it, it did root, but that was it. It just kind of quit at that point and never grew anything else. Now all of its compatriots over here in this propagation tray slash takeout container done really well and these were all single leaf propagations as well. So this entire plant here this guy here, I've actually given some away, but there are originally seven, I think, in here. That was seven leaves that turned into this entire tree worth of plants. Each one of these guys um, was one leaf, and it's, it's pretty amazing you can get that kind of growth off of one leaf. These are actually arguably bushier than the ones I've got that are single stem propagation, so that's interesting. Soil-wise, I've got in my prop tray over here, I've got a bit more of a common mixes that I would probably do. If I were to break it out evenly, I'd say kind of three parts potting soil, like your typical off the shelf potting soil, if that's what you got at home. Three parts succulent mix, if you have it. If not, you can kind of make your own. Succulent mix just needs to be really well draining, typically a little chunkier and lighter and airier than what you find in a potting soil. So I do three parts potting soil, three parts succulent mix, and then I'll throw in one to two parts of perlite for drainage. It's like a volcanic byproduct. It's white, it's fluffy, it's this white little pellet stuff. It allows for way better drainage in your soil mixes, and that's what these plants like. If I can throw in some compost for the organic material in there, compost is kind of good all around. I find that most potting mixes, soil mixes that I use, like to have a little bit of compost, so I almost always add a little bit. The one that I use includes worm castings, but if yours doesn't, you can always throw on some worm castings at the top, do a little thin layer, like a couple of millimeters on top. In terms of fertilizing, kind of your typical 10-10-10 fertilizer, or you can use a 20-20-20 and water it down by a half. No more than once a month, really, on, a, on the outside is necessary. I personally use an organic fertilizer called Marfil. It's actually from a local company here on the West Coast in Canada. I'll throw a link to it down in the description. And if you're into using organic fertilizers, then I would give that a shot. If not, honestly, I, can, I get value of just watering these guys on a consistent basis. I think consistent watering is number one for keeping your peperomias alive. After that, everything else is just a bonus. Some interesting stuff about 
Peperomia cubensis specifically. You'll find some that have a creamy variegation, which looks pretty nice. I haven't personally seen those in any of the plant shops near me. If I spotted one, I'd probably go for it because it's, it's a nice plant. And if I had that alternative, I'd love to have it. And I already have variegated versions of a couple of different peperomias here of the peperomia obtusifolia variegata that I've got. And I've got a peperomia clusifolia or rainbow, which uh, also has pretty cool variegation on it. And it has kind of a red tinted edge. But yeah, I think in general, these are really easy to take care of. They're good for desk office use. I think if they bush out a bit, you could probably put them in a hanging basket. They're great for like little corners of your house or, you know, your desk at home or a workspace, things like that, just because they're kind of compact and small. And um, that way you can keep an eye on them if they need some water, but they're pretty low maintenance as far as things go. So the terracotta pots, they, they evaporate a lot more moisture on a regular basis. So um, these go dry a little faster. I like to use the terracotta pots personally, just because it gives me a good sense of how dry they are. So I can kind of feel here and I can say, hey, you know what, this feels pretty light, probably needs a little bit of water. The plastic pots, you really don't get as much of a sense of the lightness, It's or at least it's not quite the same. You can feel when they're moist too, like the, the pot has some humidity or moisture on the outside. For these guys, I find it works really well. In terms of pot size, I try and keep them to like, you know, pretty tight. The root systems on these guys are quite small, as you can see like how much these are growing in a really thin layer of soil. Like there's probably half an inch of soil in here and they're growing like weeds and they're very happy. So I suggest you really don't need a huge pot. You might want to keep it nice and like, you know, you go by the size of the plant, the circumference of the plant, maybe just around the same size of the pot works really nicely. And I guess that's attractive too. In terms of watering, once every seven to 10 days, that probably works fine for me in the winter time, maybe once every couple of weeks. Their growing season is off from a lot of other plants. They tend to grow more in the fall and in the winter, which I did not know until recently. And I find it's pretty neat because it kind of goes off from other plants in your collection. You'll be sitting there and those ones are all kind of going dormant for the winter. And these guys are starting to kick off and grow lots. So I've noticed a lot of growth in the last month, month and a half from these guys. And they were pretty quiet for all the summertime. So I actually thought there's something wrong. Maybe they're you know not getting enough sun or water or something else. And then I realized it's just because they were kind of dormant in the summertime and they pick up in the fall and winter and then they start growing at that point. So they're kind of the inverse of a lot of other plants. So water as needed in the wintertime, I think just due to climate in your house and things like that, you're probably not going to need as much water anyways, but they are growing at that point. So in terms of pest pressures, I haven't had any problems so far with these guys. I would say that you could probably look out for things like mealybugs, maybe spider mites. I would expect that you might get some fungus if you overwater, but overwatering is going to cause you other grief with these guys. Overwatering is the number one way of killing your peperomias and a lot of plants to be fair, but peperomias in general do not like white feet. They like to sit in mostly kind of moist, but not too wet soil. And if you try and water on a schedule, you're probably gonna be okay. Just don't overwater. Um, that's the number one rule. Make sure you've got a drainage hole in there. Drainage holes are good. You can also use the bottom up watering method with these dudes. You can put some water in your tray, pop it in here, and let the water wick back up into the plant. That works just as well. And with terracotta pots, it's even a little bit easier. And it sucks in from the sides too. So now that I'm looking at this little Peperomia cubensis again, I'm realizing that I must have knocked something at some point when I was pulling these guys apart. And I think I actually broke this stem in half. So you know what? But that stem is looking a little busted. So I'm gonna take advantage of this and I'm going to trim this guy back, let him grow up back again, and I will take a cutting and I will propagate that cutting. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure that before you do any kind of cutting is that you disinfect your scissors, whatever you're using. Um, if it's a sharp knife, do the same thing. A little bit of rubbing alcohol, isopropyl alcohol is more than enough. You just put some on some cotton or on some paper towels and just run it along here on the blades and just make sure it's nice and dry and then here you go. So I'm gonna take advantage here and I'm gonna chop right at this broken piece of stem. So you can see this is kind of bent at a really awkward angle. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna chop right there, right above the previous leaf node. So I'm gonna do that right there. And there we go. So we've got actually a pretty decent cutting here. 
Ideally, you want to cut at a 45 degree angle. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to trim this off a little teensy bit off to the side. There you go. So that's a nice sharp angle on there. And that will give it a little bit more surface area to root and for water to go in. I'm also going to trim off the bottom leaves here. So I'm probably going to leave the top. I think since this, this guy only has two, three, four, five leaves, was a little baby coming in. I'm going to take off just the bottom and I cut right at the stem where the stem meets the petiole. So you want as much of the petiole, petiole being the part that connects the leaf to the stem. So this tiny piece here, you want to keep as much of that as possible. So you want to cut nice and close to the stem. So now that I've got that leaf cut off, there you go with some petiole. You can see that red piece there is the petiole. I'm going to do the same thing with this last bottom leaf here. So it gives me a little bit of stem that I can put into the water. So cut that nice and close. There we go. So that guy also has a bit of petiole sticking out. To be honest, this is not the nicest leaf. You can see it's got a little bit of a white, almost transparent patch in the middle. This was actually one of my earlier propagations and this was one of the leaves that got burnt after I transplanted it from water to soil and I put it in a sunny windowsill and I should have kept it in a shady area for a little while just to adapt and to get over transplant shock. So this one for sure is gonna be a winner um, in terms of where I put it. I think this one, you know what, since it's gonna be the very first leaf of a new propagation, I'm not too concerned about the looks of it. So I'll put these guys aside and then I'm going to put this guy into water. It's got that nice 45 degree angle cut at the bottom and now it's got a little bit of stem to put in the water. Now, ideally you want about twice this long, um, two to three inches long, but just since this was a broken piece, that's really the best I could do with this guy. And you know what? I think the rest of this plant looks pretty good, so I'm gonna leave this in here. And this piece now that I've cut should callus over. I mean, if you're pruning this plant, that's another way of pruning it as well. These leaves are semi-succulent, I'd say. They're still thick enough that they feel like they've got a decent amount of water in there. And even like uh, a well-watered cubensis is gonna have these leaves that it feels like they're kind of waxy feeling and that's normal. I've had good success with water propagating these guys. So what I may do is use my typical water propagation method. I use a jiffy cup, um, plastic cup of any kind. You can use a glass if you want. Fill it up almost to the brim with water. I layer on a piece of saran wrap over top of that. And then I will put some holes in the saran wrap and pop these guys with a petiole through the hole so that they're touching the water. It's okay if a bit of the leaf touches the water too. That won't really hurt it too badly. I would try to avoid too much of the leaf sitting in the water because you might end up with some rot. So what I've done here is I'm gonna share the space just because I don't feel like having yet another cup going. So this is just a plastic jiffy cup. Any kind of cup will do really. I use clear ones just so I can see what's happening inside. I filled it up with tap water, but it's filtered tap water. I tend to throw a little bit of uh, plant food in there. Um, just when I'm watering my plants, I'll use the same water to refill this cup. I've made a couple of holes in the top of the plastic. I'm just going to pop these guys into the petioles in the water. I'll do the same thing with this one. i just pop that in. I've made a hole on either side. And I just want to make sure there's enough water so that both those guys are sitting in there comfortably. And, and then I'm just going to let it sit, um, honestly, like on a windowsill or something like that. And since I have this here and I've already made a hole for it, I'm just gonna pop this dead center and there we go. And you know what, you don't wanna cover up the leaves too much. So just move them out of the way because if you got one set of leaves blocking another, the, uh, the photosynthetic process of the leaves will get blocked. I typically will not change the water on a regular basis. What I'll do is I'll just top it off because um, A, you'll get some evaporation just due to there being holes in there, but um, you won't get as much as you normally would. Yeah, so I don't really need um, to completely change the water out. It's a bit of a closed ecosystem this way. And the other thing is that if the water starts getting cloudy or dirty, that's really the time I'll change the water. If it's not getting cloudy or dirty, then I'll just keep on topping it off here and there just to make sure that the petioles are actually still in the water. And if the water level goes below there, you got some problems. So you want to make sure to keep on topping the water off so that they're still in the water. So that's that. Um, so what I'll do now is I'll probably just leave those sitting, you know, close to a windowsill, probably my kitchen windowsill, which gets a decent amount of bright light, but it's mostly indirect. There's a building in the way and the sun doesn't really hit it directly more than like an hour or two a day. And it's usually in the morning. So, um, it's a Southeast facing window and I use it for propagation all the time. I've got a whole row of plants sitting on there. 
And that's really where I grew these guys to begin with. So I just wanted to give you a little update here on my Peperomia propagation station <laughs> situation. I've actually got, no oh man, there's a whole bunch of Peperomia here, but um, just wanted to talk about these two little guys here. So this one first off is the one that I chopped off in our previous segment. You can see here, that's where the cut was made right there. And you can see here, there's actually a whole new segment of growth since that point. There's also buds forming in a couple other spots here. These are, I think this is actually a new leaf. And in general, it's looking really healthy. There's green growth there too. Um, there's more, and in general, yeah, I mean, growing really nicely. Uh, it's one of its compatriots here. Also, this one's grown like crazy. And this is from the same single um, stem cutting that I had originally, and it's grown off all these offshoots you can see here. These are all like, there's separate stems. Each one of these is new since I had filmed the video a couple of months back. So there's quite a bit of growth and now we're like in late December, uh, which is pretty crazy for peperomia growth. Finally, there's still my prop tray. This has actually got a whole bunch of new growth on top too. You can take a look here. All this kind of vertical growth on top. This is all brand new. And the, the really fun bit here is my water prop. There's a couple of different kinds of peperomia in here. There's actually a few leaves of a peperomia astrid at the bottom. So if you see those kind of off colored leaves there, those are a different plant, but all these greener, darker green leaves, this is the bit I cut off originally. And you can see there's actually new growth on here and huge amount of roots. There's a lot of roots and even on these leaf cuttings, these individual leaf cuttings have a whole pile of like inch plus long roots on here as well. So it's done really well. You can see all that. That's from the main stem in the center there. So this is actually pretty much ready to pot up. And that, that took about eight weeks. And this is the dead of winter, right? So uh, as you can see, like, you know, summertime, I'm not sure how these guys do. I mean, I had pretty decent growth in the summertime, but they are just keeping up throughout the course of the year, just fine. Hope you enjoyed this video about propagating and care for Peperomia cubensis. Thanks again for watching. Please drop me a like if you're interested. If you like this video and if you want to see more like this, please subscribe. If you have any comments, if you have any questions, please feel free to drop them below and I will see you in the next video. Thanks again and good luck with your Peperomias.